Thank you very much, uh, uh, David and uh, Corinne, Merrill Foundation, and uh, you all guys have come here uh, mm -hmm. for this uh, special symposium for, for Professor Muyembe. And uh, we have all emerged uh, behind him, and we are very happy here. Even though he's absent, we can have a lit, uh, at least a short talk for you and to be uh, understood. And uh, I'm a medical doctor and medical virologist, and um, I've coordinated uh, the, the, the lab response, uh, Ebola uh, outbreak response for the last seven outbreaks in DRC. And uh, I'm actually uh, leading the Rodolphe Merrill Laboratory in Goma, and also the all INRB laboratory in the eastern parts of TRC with uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Hugo Kavunga, who's just there. And it's a pleasure for us uh, to, uh, to, to, to meet uh, uh, too many people's ear. And so uh, in terms of uh, collaboration, this is uh, the first point of uh, success of uh, uh, a long-term investment uh, from partners of INRB, especially uh, Merrill Foundation and USAID uh, to, to, de to donate that, uh, that lab to Professor Muyembe. And then uh, also the local leadership to set up things and to depart from one thing and to be able to multiply, to have many, many units working and functioning uh, so that partners can be attracted and can, would like to work with, uh, with us. And this, that was a, a very great uh, honor. And so the success relies first uh, in the fact that uh, we wanted to use local resources. That was very important. During our 10th outbreak, uh, Unlike uh, Western Africa outbreaks where we have uh, many people coming from abroad to support the response, we did have those people in the field, but uh, we also kept uh, key components of the response. For example, the laboratory was only managed by Congolese staff. We did uh, diagnostic, uh, diagnosis, uh, uh, Ebola uh, survivors follow-up program, and also genomic sequencing. Sure, well, we were supported by partners, but everything was done by Congolese. And so that allowed to create a critical mass of researchers and leaders who are, be, uh, can be able to, to manage things in the, in the field. And we are very grateful also to partners of uh, INRB, especially uh, USAID, NIH, CDC, with uh, those clinical trials we do conducted regarding Ebola therapeutics, regarding RVSV vaccine and uh, GNG vaccines. So the, these, the, uh, these are very successful researches that we conducted on site during outbreak in the eastern part of DRC, where we have war, uh, chronic insecurity, and we were able to manage through uh, that success. And so we deployed, um, in total, 13 field laboratories across uh, three different provinces during the uh, outbreak of Ebola from 2018 to 2020. And I was in charge of that coordination because uh, Professor Muyembe could not be in the field, and so uh, I was the one who was available at that time. And then uh, we kept those laboratories for, um, we ran them for almost two years. And after that, at the end of the 10th outbreak, the COVID pandemic started. So there was an emergency need for, different, uh, for our government to set up the diagnosis in the eastern part of TRC. Because when COVID started, as you know, uh, all over in the world we saw we have a few testing available. And so all samples were shipped to Kinshasa. And the turnaround time could be of two weeks or three weeks. And so that created kind of uh, reluctance and resistance in community. We were ending an Ebola outbreak uh, for which we have many, many troubles to finish. And we started again with COVID-19 in the same community and we should change the explanation to be sure that will be understood. And so 
the Rodolphe Mirieux lab was uh, uh, installed at that specific critical moment, and then we start diagnosis of the eastern part of TRC. But as you see, uh, in African countries, we have uh, tribes, uh, different groups, and so leaders from uh, other provinces in the eastern DRC went to see Professor Muyembe and say that uh, we also need the same facilities in our respective provinces. We cannot be shipping samples to Goma. And so my colleague and I, Ugo, we have been able to deploy seven other COVID-19 laboratories in the eastern part of DRC. Thanks to Ebola outbreak, because uh, we, for others, we use mostly the same facilities with the same instruments, and then we required for additional support. And then uh, with uh, Rodolf Merieu lab management, we have been able to grow our, our capacity, and uh, we kept those uh, uh, field laboratories open as a frontline for surveillance. And this is how we successfully managed that part. And, and in terms of recruitment of local personnel, we only recruited pers people of the Eastern DRC with whom we worked during the outbreak and where we were trained for some uh, laboratory specific uh, uh, tips like about safety, about security, etc. They were also able to, do, to, to manipulate Ebola samples. And so we started that, uh, that management uh, and uh, that grows and grows. And now, what is the next point? We have been able to set up, we receive additional capacity. NIH uh, donated additional material for training lab. We do have that, how to move forward. So we needed additional resources uh, to set up research activities. As you may know, this turn part of DRC, we, apart from Ebola and COVID, we have some other viruses or bacteria or some other pathogens like plague, like cholera, uh, like anthrax. And so this is why uh, we call out for collaborative um, partnership in order to support uh, that activity in the field. And we are very happy. Uh, so uh, since we started, uh, we have been able to initiate it and also to receive support uh, in terms of a collaboration from uh, inter international institute institutions. Uh, so. Uh, for example, we, we, work, we work with uh, Jenkins University and uh, Epicentre, MSF, uh, on cholera. Um, so um, in the Lake, Lake Kivu, which is uh, uh, close to Goma, so we have uh, endemic uh, situation of cholera. We, do, uh, we did work with uh, London School um, to assess the immunogenicity of uh, Ebola GNG vaccines in uh, Goma in the DRC because uh, during the 2018-2020 the, the outbreak, we did use two vaccines, the Merck vaccine as a um, ring vaccination strategy and a preventive vaccine with GNG. And so uh, that was used mostly in Goma and uh, it was important to evaluate the immunogenicity of that uh, vaccine. And then with COVID-19, we were able also to, in, uh, to have one study with London School to evaluate the impact of COVID-19 of healthcare workers and health facilities. As you may know, most of people left uh, health facilities because they thought that COVID was provided uh, in, those, uh, in those health facilities. And we have other additional research activities. And so for us, uh, this flow is very important to, to say that so actually we do have a, a functional unit of bacteriology, uh, genomic sequencing, virology, molecular bio biology, etc., And we are ready to host any kind of research, not only on the lab, but we do also have field laboratories, and that is very important. And this is why uh, we also thank Merrill Foundation and USAID, because last year we did a mapping of public and private laboratories of all Eastern DRC laboratories, pri public and private, to see what is the level of uh, laboratories, they can uh, uh, store samples, how they can transport. So the idea, the idea is uh, to have uh, a sample referral system uh, for, uh, for sample shipment in this turn DRC up to the uh, provincial or regional lab, which is Rodolphe Merieux lab, where most of um, activities can be done. And so 
in turn, uh, Rudolf Merio Lab will be also able to train all those labs and to support uh, everything in terms of cold chain, uh, resources, uh, reagent, and supply. So th we do have uh, many opportunities uh, in uh, the S of DRC. Well, it's INRB, so you should not be uh, fearing it's INRB and uh, under Professor Muyembe direction. So this is not a new institution, and so would like to exactly duplicate all what we can, uh, what can be done in Kinshasa, uh, so that that may be um, a part of uh, Eastern DRC activities. As uh, the logistics uh, uh, is uh, challenging in DRC, it's very, very difficult to ship samples from the Eastern part of DRC to Kinshasa where we have the lab. And also one of the success, last year we had two Ebola outbreaks in the Eastern part of DRC, Beni and Butembo, and this is the Rodolf Merio lab, which deploy staff, equipment, material, and reagent. And we did receive support, uh, for example, gene expert cartridges from USAID, from NIH, and also some other support from Merio Foundation and other partners. And so the outbreak, uh, the two outbreaks were controlled within three months. No cases out of control, no cases out of uh, our borders, and. Uh, we didn't have community reluctance because we only deploy one expert from uh, one expert from uh, Rodolf Merrill Lab. The rest are people we used to work in those areas and those facility. They were the one who were uh, testing all samples. We needed only sample for QC for quality control, and then for sequencing. The rest was done on site. So this is how we think that um, for most of the uh, 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 region of TRC, we should uh, set up our laboratories and partnership. And then the next step will be to train those people. We receive uh, uh, people from uh, CDC, uh, from uh, Mary Foundation, coming in tr from France to train people. But the other side will be also to have some uh, scientists from uh, INRB Goma to be trained in different institutions and to be able to come back, as Professor Muyembe showed in this slide. This is why we, we, we need uh, that kind of collaboration to, to interact with, uh, with uh, different people. This is. Uh, most of my uh, my thought I have now, and uh, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.